Six o'clock, all the doors, you're back on time for Standpoint here on Morning Prime. Another beautiful week that the good Lord has afforded us. I trust that you slept easy. Had also a lovely restorative weekend. Feeling refreshed for the good week that we have ahead. Today is 28th of August, 2023. And of course, every Monday, we take a critical analysis of the politics of the week that has been. And of course, looking forward on what will be happening this week, just keeping you apprised. The bipartisan talks continues today, PES. And of course, we shall be looking also at the latest developments as far as the Political Amendment Act is concerned, where we have the legislators seeking to try and amend that particular act so that we can have officially the Office of the opposition shaken into place as far as the constitution is concerned will that really also call for a referendum well that's a question that everyone is asking and now it has been a kativa day yesterday looking back at the 13 years that we've had the constitution since it was shaken and promulgated into place and some of the hits and misses as far as the constitution is concerned and we have eminent kenyans who are calling on the of course the legislators to amend this constitution or go back to the people and amend some contentious issues not really contentious but some of the tenets within the constitutions that have been proven to be a bit difficult and needs to be harmonized well we shall be looking at that as well with our panelists today and looking at what's also what the president had as far as goodies is concerned to the western region where some of the leaders were on our show and we have the prime cabinet secretary also calling on them and saying of course they're missing out on development they're missing out also on working harmoniously with the current regime we shall be looking also at the energy act it was back to black on friday and saturday here in the country many of the businesses were affected and they're coming out to the fore calling out on the government to be at least responsible on this particular matter and this is not the first time in may 2020 we had a blackout also in 2022 january we had a blackout and also we had nine executive uh, members of the kenya power and lighting company being arranged well, have we learned anything from those particular cases so far? Well, this, they say, really came out from the left. They've never experienced such a predicament. But is that an excuse? In terms of preparedness, we shall be looking at that as well. And what is the way forward? Because we've had also the Senator of Nairobi, Edwin Sifuna, coming up with a new amendment within the Energy Act, trying to streamline that particular sector that seems to be bedeviled by this continuous current spate of blackouts we shall be looking at that as well but let's see what is fresh off the press this morning before we are joined with our panelists we're speaking this morning to gladys bostrile who is a deputy speaker of the national assembly also we're talking to dr makali mulu who is a member of parliament kitui central we're joined this morning as well by eden kanan member of parliament el das and we'll be joined by richard onyonka who is a senator of kisi let's see what is fresh off the press today and this is what you're waking up to on the front page of the bold paper the standard mystery of missing billionaire mystery of missing billionaire is what is a splash this morning and it says the family of investor just want ryan reported to police about his abduction and all attempts to know his whereabouts were met with a wall of silence dci grilled him last month and this story continues on page two and three the latest news is that he has of course been released by is alleged abductors and you can follow the story on page two and three this year has no justification for placing a red alert against me i am not a criminal i verily believe that participating in the insolvency proceedings is not a criminal offense this is what ryan had said on july the 19th 2023 day when he moved to court to stop his arrest right we shall be also looking at the other side where we had our athletes making us proud, pride of the nation. Faith Kipiegon is now the most decorated at the world's best athlete in 2023 by winning, a two, winning two gold medals at the World Athletics Championships. Early in the year, she broke three world records in 1,500 meters, 5,000 meters and mile. And you can follow the story on page 32 and 31. 31 and 32 of the standard this morning that is the letters that we have there 
And just to also update you that Kenya is topping Africa and also it's the fifth in the world at the World Championships in Budapest with 10 medals, 3 gold, 3 silver and 4 for bronze. Kenya tops Africa and the fifth in the world at the World Championships in Budapest with 10 medals, 3 gold, 3 silver and 4 bronze. Making us proud there. All the details are inside the standard today. Also remember health and science. Pull-up magazine comes in handy for you every Monday inside the standard. Spotlight on lands official of a fraud also is another story that you want to follow inside the standard today. Owners of the 18-acre land in the city want ESCC to investigate lands ministry officials who facilitated fraudulent transfer of the, the property leading to court battles. You have a story on page 7 of the standard this morning. And just going back to the health and science pull-out magazine, I dreamt of breathing freely without an inhaler. It's all about asthma and you can read all the details there inside the health and science pull-out magazine in the standard. Fees outcry as schools reopened for shortest term. This is on page 4 of the standard today and crocodile as they normally call him, or the crocodile wins second time. The crocodile wins second term. This is on page 22, elections in Zimbabwe. And I like it when I remember someone calling it crocodile. Right, just a little bit with the tongue, family and chick there. The story continues on page 22, the standard. Taxman nets record cash from airports. This is on business pages of the standard this morning. Also, Kenya schools reign in ESCC volleyball. That is another story to want to follow inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. The standard this morning on page 30 of the standard today. All right, let's see what we have on the front page of the Delhi Nation. And this is what you're waking up to on the front page of the Delhi Nation this morning. Right? We'll just be beaming that for you. The cruel face of corruption is what is on the front page of the Delhi Nation this morning. The cruel face of corruption. CS Kendiki vows to crack down on Nyayo House graft cartels. That is a pledge. And we're trying to slay the, the clammy fingers of corruption in this country. Right? It is pervading every sector. Sugar sector. We have it also in the security sector. We have it in the judiciary. And isn't the pain? Let me just read some of the details that are highlighted here. It says Kenya is hoping least high capacity passport printing machine will help clear backlog backlog of 58,000 applications arising from breakdown of machines that has been one of the reasons saying they need also finger fingerprint experts that are lacking also we have one of the machines that prints the 34 50 and 66 pages passport booklets broke down in march the number of passports processed and issued increased by 55.9 percent to They've not given the details there, right? To actually, it's up there. 4,000, 400,000. That is 426,137 in 2022. In July, immigration PS Julius Bitok said the government had ordered two passports, printing machines from Germany. Yeah, they are yet to arrive in the country. This is what we have here on the front page of Standard this morning. Kenyans are an angry lot. They have good reason to be owing to the pain they go through to access services guaranteed by the constitution the process of obtaining essential documents passports identity cards certificates of good conduct marriage and birth certificates has become an arduous ordeal for citizens this is a story tucked away on page four five and six of the daily nation this morning and looking on the sideboard as well majestic mora bags gold Mary Mora skipped over the line in joy as she won the 800 meters world title in Budapest, uh, ending a thing moves dominance. And we have options should talks fail. This is what Azimio says. Azimio Law Moja, one Kenya leaders have said they will not be held to ransom by the section of Kenya Kwanzaa leaders opposed to the ongoing bipartisan talks, accusing the hardliners of trying to derail the process. That story is tucked away on page 7 of the Daily Nation this morning. On top here, teachers pay to delay as stocks stall. Teachers will receive their August salaries later than usual. 
depending on the outcome of pay increase, that is pay increase negotiations between the employer and the union scheduled for this morning. You can follow the story on page two of the Daily Nation this morning. Every Monday you have the junior sport, KCPX Science, English and KCSE Physics. The all tucked away on page 22. Those are the papers, exam papers that for your revision. You can follow that inside the Daily Nation this morning. This time, brutal sets. Ground for Riley's Plum Office. Deal President believes strong watchdog will enhance oversight of the executive. Proposed law allocates opposition chief's office 5% of the political party's funds. And you have the story on page 4 and 5. As mentioned earlier, that is tucked away in the Political Amendment Act that has been drafted so far that seeks to shake into place this particular office of the opposition. And mountain, mountains of field, Chuck River as climate summit set for city. This is Nairobi River near Ngara Nyayo Market on August the 22nd. The Nairobi Rivers Commission, which was tasked with rehabilitation and restoration of the Nairobi River Basin, has its work cut out ahead of the Africa Climate Week 2023, starting on September the 4th. Also still on the front page of the staff, Sakaja's Dishi in a county fitting program to be rolled out in phases. Police Uniform Committee 6 opinion ahead of planned adoption of new set and you have governor waiguru opening up on has cocat and tenure as cog chairperson all that inside the star and how sugar baron just went singh rai was abducted and the letters of course is that he has been released by his abductors you can follow the story on page two of the star let's look at the people daily how outage hit farms families now we can see the blowback of it Counting losses, tales of agony after businesses, hospitals, malls, and homes from 15 hour weekend power blackout. This story continues on page four of the People Daily this morning. Anxiety as schools open for third time. Also, that story tucked on page two of the People Daily hits misses as Kenya marks 13 years of 2010 constitution. Right? This is on page six and 11 of the people daily this morning activists and politicians say it is time to review supreme law claim it has been adulterated follow the story inside the people daily this morning and which was zimbabwe after polls president emerson munagango was at the weekend declared winner of a tightly contested presidential race securing a second and final term even as opposition candidate nelson chamisa rejected the results and observers raised questions about the integrity of elections according to the bbc police arrested 11 election observers accusing them of attempting to interfere with the voting meanwhile in other in another election in gabon the government cut of internet services citing fears of incitement to violence as President Ali Bongo seeks a third term to extend his family's 56-year rule in the Central African nation. You can read all the details there inside the People Daily this morning. All right. This is what is happening in Tanzania. Samia, why we must keep pace with global changes? President Samia Suluhu Hassan said yesterday Tanzania will be proactive in embracing the future as it is reshaped both economically and politically by global forces and dynamics and of course i'll show you also what is on the front page of the business daily as well capital flight has nsc investors wealth as well is another story i'll load up for you that particular paper much much later in the course of the program this is what is happening in tanzania this morning also mao got dirty cash for polls this is dp uh bosses this is what it says if you're waking up in uganda as well you can read all about it and Kiplangat strikes Uganda's second goal at Global Meet. Right, this is Kiplangat there in Uganda, making them proud as well in Uganda. In Rwanda this morning, Rwanda signs landmark deal with Bayern Munich. Rwanda has signed similar deals with Arsenal and Paris Saint Germain. You can follow the story there on page four of the New Times if you're working up there. And we can see here the, an insert. Claire Akamanzi, CEO of the Rwanda Development Board in also we can see sean christian drissen their munich christian executive that is chief executive officer and aurore mimosa munyagaju the minister of sport 
Holding a jersey of Bayern Munich after announcing the signing of a five-year partnership with the German football club on Sunday. This story continues on page 27 of the New Times this morning. And Masai Ujiri reflects on how Kagame initiated BK Arena. You can read all about that inside the New Times in Rwanda. An RSSB gets data controller certification is another story on page 8 of the New Times in Rwanda. This South African this week is all about EAC catchment plan on the entire of Horn. Now we have Somalia being the latest kid in the block as far as the East African community is concerned. Even as Somalia prepares to join the East African community and an energy secretarial Secretariat talks of more members, a bigger block comes with more challenges. You have a story on page 5 of East African. BRICS woos Ethiopia, Egypt in expansion. Blocks eyes bigger size for better say in world economy with alternative system. All systems, you have the story all laid out for you on page 16 of the East African this week. Africa champions. Kenya national women's volleyball team Malkia strikes celebrate a point during the African national championship final match against Egypt in Yaounde, Cameroon on August 24, 2023. Kenya won 3-0 to lift the trophy, its 10th continental title. You can follow the story, all that tucked away in the East African, also them making Kenya proud as, alongside the athletes as well. This is East African for you. The China Daily is focusing on concrete efforts to build beautiful Xinjiang urged. Concrete efforts to build beautiful Xinjiang is urged. They should come up with concrete effort in building Xinjiang city. She calling for united, harmonious, prosperous and culturally advanced growth of the region. This is what the China Daily is holding for us this morning. Visit Max Progress to Fair World President Ching's uh, Xi Jinping's recent visit or recent state visit to South Africa and his attendance at the 15th BRICS summit are a proof of the noticeable and fresh progress made by emerging markets and developing economies towards building a fairer and just global governance system. Senior officials and experts have saying this. You can follow the story inside the China Daily this morning. The New Times is up. This is the latest, the most important place on earth. The oceans issue, even as the world is focusing on climate summit, this is what is emerging as well. The coral reefs, they are endangered species, and the most important places on earth also is the ocean. You can read all about it inside the Time magazine. The Economist is looking at she as well. She's failing model. Why he won't fix China's economy? This is what the Economist is carrying out. This is the latest edition. And you can read all about it inside the economist. She riding there on the dragon, which is looking like a seahorse. And you can read all about it tucked away inside the economist. Britain's low wage addiction and Prigozhin's Goten Marung. Right? That was his Waterloo, was it? You can follow all the details inside the economist as well. The rest to build a super battery of indie vultures and sanitation as well all tucked away inside the economist i shall be showing you what we have as editor cartoons as well looking also at other publications the week in the us and the uk as well just to doggedly follow what is happening globally as far as current affairs is concerned we continue pursue the conversation here with our panelists this morning as i mentioned earlier we are joined by member of parliament from eldas Eden canaan this morning also, we're joined by Gladys Bostrelet, who is the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. We're joined this morning as well by Dr. Makali Mulu, who is Member of Parliament, Kitui Central, and will be joined much, much later by also the Senator of Kisi. This is Richard Onyonka in a moment. But let me just uh, get the introductory remarks as well, just to tell us how the weekend was, and if they were doggedly following what is happening in Budapest, as far as Kenya is concerned, we're leading in Africa with the fifth in the world, and the athletes are making us very proud this morning. Gladys, good morning, good to see you. You're coming from, uh, of course, the county of uh, champions. Yeah, city of champions. City of champions. And the source of champions. <laughs> You're one of the champions. You're one of the champions as well. 
yes, yes. You didn't do your round this morning. Of course, I had to hijack you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to come in the studios. But of course, we celebrate them. Yes. Uh, Faith Kip Kiegon, mm -hmm. uh, Wafula, and uh, Lady Mora. The Lady Mora as yes. well. We, we are really proud of them. At least yeah, yeah. it's a fresh, fresh uh, respite from yeah. uh, you know, mm -hmm. the heavy going also politics that we've been embroiled <laughs> in as a country. What do you have to say? No, this is exciting. I mm -hmm. think these people put Kenya on the world map. Yes. In fact, when you introduce yourself that you're from Kenya, if you want people to understand where it is, you say the home of the world's greatest marathon runners. Mm -hmm. Then people get it in context. Mm -hmm. So it is how we introduce ourselves. It's how we are known. It is Kenya's brand and it is something that we must celebrate, we must protect, mm -hmm. and we must continue to ensure that we give them the greatest support that they can get. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Because that, that is our brand as Kenya. Mm -hmm. We're not known for our tea. We're not known for our coffee. We're just known for our flakes. Indeed, indeed. was a bit off to hear Wanyonyi, because we are not used to the name Wanyonyi. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's uh, not been yeah. built, but then um, there's a part of Kenya that are very good with short distance runners. Mm -hmm. And we haven't actually uh, built up on our short distance. Mm -hmm. And there are many sports that Kenya mm -hmm. can get into. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at it, we've just dealt with athletics, like from where I come from. The only reason is because athletics doesn't need any equipment for you to train. Indeed. But actually, anybody who can run that distance can also swim mm. and can also cycle. So we should be looking into developing and diversifying our other sports. Because we, over, we have sub subscribed on, on athletics. On athletics. But they, the same people, if if, just that we don't have swimming pools available. Mm. But the same endurance you need for a marathon is the is same endurance that you need for swimming. You, I used to be the my the high school. We used to have the championships. I was the I used to do the half mile backstroke. Oh really? Champion. I, I was. You're, that's you're what you're I did. Good <laughs> but oh, we're looking also on the swimming side. It has been banned. Uh, still, that sector in, in Kenya. Yes. There, there are a lot of issues as well. It's a lot of issues, and that's why there has to be a focused way that the ministry should look into it, mm -hmm. because it's also we have people who are uh, because there's a lot of money in federations then there is a lot of politics in federations. Mm -hmm. So you find that they go to court to try and stop anything from moving on and so on. And we are hoping that uh, after the conversations that we've had with the, with the cabinet secretary for sports, he's agreed that he's going to look into that. Mm -hmm. Even with all the court cases that are in court, for example, uh, Athletics Kenya hasn't had elections since 2016. And they're supposed to have elections, yes. You have the same thing with our aquatics. Uh, that has to be looked at. So they need to assemble all the court cases on the table, even go through a mediation. We don't have to be in court. Mm -hmm. These are things that they can, arbitration can be employed. Mm. They try and resolve it because at the end of the day, our sports people are the ones suffering. Mm -hmm. They're losing opportunities mm -hmm. to be able to represent Kenya. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, let's hear from... Uh Ed and Kenan as well. The last time uh, uh, we were talking about camels, and it, maybe it's high time also we should uh, put camels for our rest as well. So we have <laughs> can diversify, diversify our, our, our sports portfolio, right? Yes, we have the Marlal or Samburu Camel Derby. Yes. Uh, the Camel Derby. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, and I'm sure the Honorable Sholei, uh, if she's interested, because I'm told she's a great. Uh, sports person. That's one area that you can really venture. It's something that is imagined. But coming back, you, to... you riding on the camel. Or, or riding on the camel, even use it. I believe if you go to Bombas here, you, will not, you can also have a first hand experience yes, yes. on camel mm -hmm. riding. It's something that is so uh, prominent in the Middle East, in particular, we have been to Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and uh, United Arab Emirates. It's one of the sources actually of, of uh, foreign mm -hmm. exchange and it's in, in the Middle East. But that being the case, I think we, this was a great week, a bad week and a great week. Mm. A great week uh, because of the performance of uh, our great men and women in the sports industry. And in fact, that's why we should pride ourselves as having sport diplomacy as one of the key components actually in our foreign policy because that's what markets. That's Ryan is now imagined as the interface between Kenya and the outside world. And that's why when you identify yourself as, as, as uh, uh, coming from the country of sportsmen and women, uh, I think it's something that we ought to be very proud of. We are now number one in Africa with 10 medals. And I'm told number five in the world is not a mean achievement. It's something that we can proudly, first of all, protect and equally sustain and ensure that also many other uh, uh, youth who have the same talents, which have not been tapped, can also join the same league by giving them conducive environment. That was a great week. Mm -hmm. 
a sad week because of what happened. There's serious blackout at uh, the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, which is a great facility, not only in the in Kenya, not yes. only in East Africa, in the whole of Africa, south of Sahara, but in the whole globe. It was a sad one. Uh, and uh, it's something that actually we ought not to allow at all, mm. at all, at all, because yep. we are losing. <coughs> you compare right now, JK, once upon a time, Kenya was uh, a serious uh, communication hub, infra travel hub. If you go to Abole right now, or even Rwanda, you'll see the difference. I, I think we need to do a bit of internal audit and find out what has, what has really been ailing. Indeed, yeah. The actions by the minister, good, but can we, that is just dealing with the, with, the, with, the, with the symptom. Can we go for the cause? Uh, 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 what caused this? Has it been the case? Mm. Who takes responsibility? Was it sabotage? Was it because of inefficiency? Was it because of other factors? Indeed. Because it's something that actually, first of all, is a security risk. Two, is a bad publicity. And three, it beats the very essence of having Kenya as a, as a regional economy. Mm -hmm. The minister took action, but I think that's not enough. It's something that really we need to find out what happened. Mm -hmm. It's not the first time. I will leave you there. Uh, 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 good week again, because of you have seen a very, the very rich Mark cultural show. Aside cultural, so it's something that is an abundant of our rich yes. cultural heritage. I'm sure many other communities will be envious of doing the same, uh, 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 and uh, that's going to also add to our rich mm -hmm. uh, cultural diversity yes. and heritage, and, and something that many other communities actually are beginning to uh, uh, emulate. Mm -hmm. We have also had uh, 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 serious uh, discussion on the bipartisan talks, threats, uh, uh, progress. I, I think the players must be very careful. In negotiations, you don't issue failed threats, mm -hmm. especially where you are moving from the known to the unknown. The known, the known is we had disagreements. Uh, we had mando mando. Mm -hmm. The unknown is where these negotiations will take us. And I think people must come to the table in good faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I agree with what some players have said yesterday, that we, it's, it's very difficult actually to negotiate an environment of, uh, of, of you know, blackmail threats. And we should allow the team Mm -hmm. They are competent people, they know what Kenyans want, they know the issues at hand, they should be allowed to uh, uh, negotiate. So as we begin the new week, I hope we'll see some movements towards uh, agreeing on what the Kenyan people actually are mm -hmm. desirous mm -hmm. of achieving from the talks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, and of course, uh, also, Sunday was a big day, it was a uh, Katiba day. And uh, this is one to rope in also, yes, yes. Dr. Makali Mulu as well, just to, to give us his introductory remarks as well. Beginning with athletics, we are waiting for at least a mutua. <laughs> 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 to bring the diversity as well on that yeah, particular yeah, picture. Sure. Or another uh, more far uh, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. yeah mutua have been there in the past. He's been there in the, past, in the past, yes. I was just reading this, I was coming, there's another one called Happy, who has got, is it a Baharan who is also a Kambo, who is, mm -hmm. decided to go and run for another country. Yes. She also managed to get a gold. But all said and done, well, we must congratulate our abilities. And they did a good job. It was very good, actually. When you, when you watch them as they hit the, the finish line, you feel proud to be a Kenyan. That's, I think that's the only time Kenyans feel proud to be a Kenyan. Mm -hmm. You're that, sitting on the sofa, you stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. At that time, none of us thinks about where you come from. Mm -hmm. you, you just see Kenya. And you, you know, I wish we had many activities which make us feel, have that feeling that I'm proud to be a Kenyan. But also that and done bow. It was a good week. Like by weekend we spent most in social issues. Barring one of our elders who had passed on. And at the same time also I did, attended a family uh, mar uh, marriage ceremony. So a bit of family issues, not more public. Mm -hmm. The uh, wedding and the ceremony. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the traditional ceremony before you go for the church. Was it the wedding and the funeral? I mean, there was a movie. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm saying, social. It yeah. was mm -hmm. Friday, we uh, burial, Saturday, uh, traditional ceremony for one of my nephews who, is, who plans to get a wife. But, but, uh, but I think uh, Dibal really, as Kainan said, if you look at the whole week, a, a lot of uh, things happened. I don't know, the, the Maasai culture, you know, I don't know how many of us took time to, to watch what was happening in Maasai land. In the mall. Quite I mean, impressive, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday there was also something in Kajado. Mm -hmm. I saw something in Kajado. Quite impressive. And you, you, you look at the way they have sustained their, 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 their culture. Uh, and the way they, 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 
uh, stick, sticking to, to, to sticking to their to their traditional way of doing things. You saw the way they dressed our president, the way they dressed the prime minister. You know, you go there and it's like you're just one of them. You feel good, and uh, uh, how I wish uh, most of us uh, did the same in our region, so that. Uh, you know, our culture and also very good things, which, which we just missed by adapting to this Western life, lifestyle. And I think if each, each community in Kenya mm -hmm. attempted just to maintain one of the strong cultural issues, would be doing very well, First, mostly for national units. Because to me, I think if we had about five groupings like the Maasai, who are such strong as a grouping, uh, it will even become very easy for us to do national, you know, reconciliation. Any time we want to discuss things which cut across the regions, it will be very easy. So that's something I think is, it was is what the emulating is move to the future. Uh, I see the mayor, mayor also with the, the Juri mm -hmm. could this actually bring that kind of thing? The other community which is strong, strong with the with the elders is also I think the local community. I think they could also the ones who are already somehow. Uh, and then the rest can start learning slowly so that we get most of us. The, the, the issue of the national dialogue, <laughs> I agree with Kainan, you know, anytime I watch the, the, the political statements coming from different leaders, uh, I, I got very discouraged. Mm -hmm. Very, very discouraged. And more so, you, you, you saw we were lectured as a community by the deputy president. Mm -hmm. The lecturing, uh, we got a serious lecturing uh, at a barrio in Mwala, where we were being told as a community, we should disown, uh, we should disown our leaders and all those things. Uh, I think that was very unfortunate. And, uh, they, to, make, to make it worse, is Maybe when, he has a when, when you say, all oh, those people are just wasting time. Those, those talks, are not good. we are not going to get anything out of those talks. So we'd rather forget about them and uh, think about other things. And this is coming from number two of the country at the same time. Number one in the country, the other side is also saying the same story. So you ask yourself, why are we wasting time and money? Mm -hmm. Because uh, we have serious people sitting down, led by our my party leader, the other side led by the, the majority leader, uh, taking a lot of time. I can tell you for sure, and uh, our deputy speaker will bear me witness, that uh, the, the majority leader is no longer now in the house as he normally is, because mm -hmm. he's busy also coordinating the other side. And uh, how I wish that. Uh, if the things are just, if this is just a kind, like for uh, a talk show, why can't we come back to the house and focus on more <laughs> serious business? Because it was very discouraging. And I think really I agree with Kenan that we need to allow the team to do, to do their work. It is, it's unfortunate. And I've said here many times publicly that uh, our side is not short of options. So nobody should imagine that we are just going to sit and uh, things are not being taken seriously and we move, push forward. Mm -hmm. I think we have we, we, many ways of dealing with this. We don't want to go back where we have come from. As a country, we need to move forward. I've said many times, from where I sit as an economist, I get very concerned when I see that kind of those statements because they are sending the wrong signal to our investors, to our own Kenyan investors, external investors, and that doesn't provide the right environment for business to, to thrive. Mm -hmm. So if business is not thriving, we have problems. So let's just focus. Allow the right, uh, what we call conducive environment for business to succeed in this country. Mm -hmm. And it will do very well. Conducive environment for business, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very key. Allow us just to, before we buckle down to business, to hack back into history and see what happened today in 2015 uh, when we had also a conducive environment for business. A museum is up next. All right, as they're trying to put the ducks in a row there. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, it, will, it will be now uh, 13, it is actually 13 years. It's a Katiba day yesterday. People were celebrating, uh, just looking at the milestone that we've made as far as the uh, promulgation of a constitution is concerned, Gladys Bostrile. And the question is, is this a Katiba moment? Is it a constitutional moment? There are things that we've uh, seen from the constitution that now maybe needs amendment. They've brought to question some of uh, the issues right Right now we're talking about the presidential and the parliamentary system. We have a mongrel of a constitution, so to speak, a hybrid that is borrowed from England, borrowed from America, and uh, also a snippet of it from South Africa. Mm -hmm. And the question is, 
do we need to amend the constitution? From your own assessment, just broadly speaking, before we get to the silent issues regarding that. Um, I, I think uh, it's, it's a great moment to be able to be, look back. And for me, I've had the privilege and the grace to have lived through the old constitution, seen the new constitution come in, and then lived through it and to see the implementation of that new constitution. Yes, we've had some challenges, but we've also had some really great things coming out. If you assess Kenya, Kenya is probably the most, one of the most democratic countries in the world, uh, thanks to our constitution. Mm -hmm. If you look at our election system, uh, all the problems that Kenya had, we put in the new constitution. When we had challenges with the swearing in of the president in the night, Kenyans now put it in the constitution to say, the president shall be sworn between 10 and 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. in public, on a specified date, at a specified time. So those are the challenges that we came up with. Mm. We had the challenge of the of uh, marginalized persons. We put it in the constitution to say that marginalized persons in Kenya shall be, be in all elective and and uh, appointive positions. And mm -hmm. it's it's made changes so that we find that all our independent commissions all our positions in government, it, it's now has diversity, that every part of Kenya is represented. So that you don't have a situation where, under the old constitution, you could have people coming from one community mm. dominating cabinet. That has changed. So there's been a lot of positives coming out. But also the good thing about implementing a constitution, you begin to see, because a constitution is supposed to be pragmatic, it's live, it's supposed to, you're supposed to keep amending it depending on the new challenges that have been found. Mm. Uh, I think uh, the saddest part with the constitution for me is the fact that we have not been able to implement the two-thirds gender principle. Mm -hmm. Despite it being in the constitution, parliament has failed to pass legislation. Deliberately failed. There is no goodwill. There is no goodwill. Yes. Is, yes. Uh, uh, parliament is uh, dominated by men. So if you bring that, they, they don't have been sensitized enough. Unfortunately, our men here, uh, and I don't blame them, it's their socialization. It's the way they have grown up. Mm. For you to be gender sensitive, your mother has to teach you. It is not something you learn in school. It's something that you learn at home. It's you learn through your culture and your socialization. So what we should be telling ourselves is that we need to raise more gender sensitive children. Mm. And then, hence, the, then when that issue will come before Parliament, they'll be able to pass it. And uh, I've had conversations with my colleagues in Parliament when I tried to uh, bring a constitutional amendment bill in order to ensure that we had at least, uh, you know, the two-thirds gender principle entrenched in all elective and appointive positions. Many of them don't actually understand why it's necessary. So it just tells you that. It, it, the understanding is still lacking. And unless we begin to employ it in our schools, uh, it's not going to happen. So that's the saddest part, it's the biggest failure of our constitution. I think it has come out clearly also that we need to entrench the position of official leader of opposition in the constitution mm -hmm. and have it actually legislated so that you have the opposition being able to have resources proper office where they can actually check government because mm -hmm. at the moment the reason why they go when you hear the opposition going to the streets yes that's a very primitive and archaic methodology mm -hmm. of uh, checking government the best way should have been the opposition should actually have shadow cabinet ministers yes. mm -hmm. they should have when we when the government presented its finance bill mm -hmm. if the opposition was working the opposition should have actually brought in their own counter finance bill and say this is how it should look if they say they want to bring down the cost of living they should have their own cab uh, their own shadow cabinet minister yes. uh, for for the for the national treasury who will then say these are the fiscal policies fiscal prudence uh, policies these are the measures that we have brought in and interventions that we are suggesting for the purpose of bringing down the cost of living. That way, we'll be a civilized society. Mm -hmm. But going to the street does not 
bring down the cost of living. Well, but and that's why we have to empower the office of the leader of opposition so that they can bring actual suggestions on the table. Because mm -hmm. going to the street is not a suggestion. In fact, you're, you're bringing up the cost of living by doing that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the, it gives the opposite effect because you're, you're destroying um, the image of the government, which means you're not, you're not attracting investors. You are uh, damaging uh, uh, businesses. You are causing people not to go to work. So that they, 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 even though they go to the street in the guise of fighting against the cost of living, they are actually definitely incre you know, making it worse. They are increasing the cost of living mm. by going on the street. But if they are a, a formidable opposition party, then they will be able to bring actual suggestions. And, um, right. and I think just for Kenyans to know, if you look at uh, the initial finance bill that was tabled, after public participation, several amendments were made because people came in. And I thank the 160 people who appeared before the committee, the memorandum that people brought, public members of the public brought. In fact, those members of the public did a better job than those who went on the street mm -hmm. because they brought in real amendments and changes were made. Look at the content creators. They appeared before the parliamentary committee. And the parliamentary committee, as a result, reduced their tax to 5%. Look at the people who went before the parliamentary committee to say you cannot increase the tax on, uh, on human hair and wigs and so on. They went and gave a real, real case scenarios and the, the parliamentary committee actually made amendments to that aspect. If you look at uh, the issues that were brought by uh, that some of the business people about taxes, the issue that they don't get their VAT refunds on time and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. It caused changes. So if you look at um, the, the, you know, the 8% VAT on petroleum products being yes. returned back to 16%, it was actually business people who came and said, people are importing in products and calling it petroleum products and then they pay 8% instead of 16%, then causing an unfair competition mm -hmm. in the market. So if you actually uh, are able to be re well resourced as an opposition, you can use that opportunity as Thank the opposition you. to table Thank you. real um, and, and well, uh, well, changes. What, what we want to interrogate is the fact that does it change the basic structure of the constitution as it is, right? Even if we have that particular good salutary ambitious effort that we should install this official figure, in our constitution so that you do not really go to the constitution what does it really uh, take i think we shall also interrogate that but but i want just to hear highlight also from you Eden Kane, and as far as the katiba moment is concerned you think from your uh, estimation uh, for those of us who come from northern kenya you know our history we didn't fully participate uh, in the making of the first post-independent constitution we had other challenges mm. so meaning we got our document that was prepared elsewhere, but was used to rule us. So many were disadvantaged in every sense. What happened, and you, you remember there were a number of laws. I'm sure Gladys knows there were a number of laws that were tailor-made for the people of Nigeria. We had the Indemnity Act, we had uh, the District Contagious Act, we had many other laws. So we say we got our first, Kenyans got uh, their first internal rule in 1962. We say we got our first internal rule in 1991. Uh, the advent of, uh, of, of uh, you know, uh, 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 repealing Section 2 of the... And then we say we got our independence in 2010, in court. Independence meaning economic independence. So that, that, is, that is a very pragmatic view of uh, the constitutional revolution of Kenya. But I didn't look at it. I was in Parliament. First of all, we must accept that this is a man-made document. Mm -hmm. Man-made document, meaning you expect many pitfalls. Madman, that's the we, this one thing that we must internalize. Man made document, meaning there are so many challenges, even at the time when we were passing. And remember, it was a product of many years, many attempts, yes, to have a new constitution. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, what happened in Naivasha towards the tail end of uh, uh, 2000, uh, I mean, early uh, 2010 and late 2009 was as a result of many attempts, uh, many negotiations. I remember we were in Naivasha. Uh, and, and I think for one to really understand this, you need to get the notes 
of the framers, of the guys who were there then, mm -hmm. and what the, really they had in mind. So at the time when we were passing, we were in the rush, we said, this is not a very good document. It's good. 90% is good. But, but some said we had 10% which was legal. Mm -hmm. Has that been cured? The answer is no. Those are things that now, now we have to grapple with because we have used these documents. It's a very pragmatic document. It's a very progressive document. It's been, we have used our governance structure. Mm -hmm. Everybody now feels the, you know, where it pinches, where you think uh, it may not resonate with your own uh, 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 personal uh, uh, interest, regional interest, tribal interest, national interest. I call it. So this is a time that I think we should come together and, and look at it realistically, address the two-third gender rules. Mm -hmm address the leader of uh, uh, the office, the, the enactment of uh, the office of the leader of official opposition, look at uh, the workings of devolutions, uh, look at how that document has contributed to our economic diplomacy. Once we do this and we do a bit of uh, formative evaluation on yes. the document, mm -hmm. I think it is the high time that whether it's going to be uh, 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 through public oriented referendum, or whether a parliamentary initiative, is the high time that we look at the document collectively and say, look, where has it not worked? It's a working document. Even in America, the most vibrant democracy in the world, they have had a number of, uh, of, of amendments since uh, they propagated their current constitution over 200, 300 years ago. So Kenya is not an exemption. But I think I'm, we must admit that we have a very good document. And this is one thing that holds this country together. There are certain things that are predictable, mm -hmm. like when the elections will be held, when the next uh, the, 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 the retiring president will leave office. But there is a mechanism. That is what was lacking. I remember in 2007, I supported PNU. We had the swearing in at seven. That raised a lot of questions. And even the framers, when they came up with these timelines on how the presidential elections are supposed to be conducted, how the transition is supposed to be done, they must have had uh, learned from that particular challenge. But now that we have learned from the other challenges, it is the high time that we look at it critically, objectively, soberly, and come up with the areas that we think will add value to the well-being of the people. Ultimately, we must also remember, we can disagree with our petty politics, but we all have one country called the Premier Republic of Kenya. And without it, you will not be seated where you are. Indeed. Gladys will not be where she is. Uh, my friend uh, will not be where I will not be. So this is one thing, and this is one thing that we can all collect around and say, look, this is good for Kenya, without politics. But if we look at it, uh, uh, because Kenya is a very political country, and uh, you know our, our, our different uh, uh, players in our governance platform have expanded. Traditionally, we used to have parliament, the, the, the judiciary, the executive. Now we have social media as part of our governance structure because they do things that you may not ask them to do and, and that informs the public and it's even ahead of you before even you make even a decision that's also sh that also mm -hmm. shapes the public opinion we have the members of the fourth estate you, you see the kind of things that you do the sensational headlines look at if you look at the, all the headlines today they're not sensational let me, let me, let me take you this okay. look at look at this piece right. the cruel face of corruption good topic but it's very sensational uh, that's the daily nation uh, just, yes uh, uh -huh. yes if you look at this, uh, the, the, the star uh -huh. is one topic, an itemized, just a slight comment the president made now is the headline. Uh, 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 look at this, it's another, so of course for you, you have to look at what sells. But I think this is the high time that we need to change our thinking and concentrate on, on, uh, on the economic activities of the people. That's what is going to give, that's what's going to expand our, 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 our economic, uh, our, our GDP. That is what is going to give us some capital gains. That's what is going to improve, uh, reduce the cost of living. And that is one thing that right now we are putting on the account. We are talking about the cost of living. How do you reduce the cost of living when you have had Mandamando, when you have destroyed uh, businesses? Uh, businesses? I, I saw something today. And, with people. and uh, something that really got my attention. The Italian investors appealing to the president, mm -hmm. complaining about cartels. I think those cartels, because how do we attract foreign direct investment if we do not have a conducive environment? I want, us to, that, yes, I want us to come robustly on that the issue also the president is raising with the cartels as well in the sugar sector. Now also we have it in... So, so when, when I saw this and I just said I hope, I hope this well. will also attract the attention of, of the president, if it is true, I'm not sure whether it's true or not. I think that should not only apply to the Italian investors in Kenya. All investors must be protected. And this is right now we are under pressure. And this is one thing that just see Ethiopia. Just see Rwanda, just see Tanzania, just see Uganda. Uh, our competitive edge right now is with Southern Sudan, Somalia. I'm not in the way in a minute. And, uh, this is what we need to get off. 
need to go out of and join, finally join the League of uh, Developed Nations. And Thank for you. us to do it, uh, uh, we must put some of the hate-driven politics and threats. Uh, we'll go back to Mando Mando, we'll do this. Those things don't assist. I will let the Kikombe Achai Kwameza. All right. Uh, let's hear from Akali Mulu uh, briefly before we take a short break as well. And uh, we plumb deep on this particular, particular issues as well. With the black, uh, back to black, the blackout yeah. really for me. <laughs> okay. That was uh, the highlight of, uh, of the weekend. Yes. Truly. Mm. Now, now, you know, the ball, the, the 2010 constitution has been uh, there for now the last uh, 13 years. We have now gone through using the constitution for 13 years. And 13 years is quite a long, a long period of time. Uh, the way I look at it is that uh, the people who came up with this constitution and Kenyans came out and said this is our document and expectations. So if I were asked to, to look in a systematic way at this the current constitution, what I would do is I would go chapter by chapter and look at what were the expectations and what have we achieved. And I think some areas have done quite well. A chapter like human rights, that is uh, everybody, even internationally, uh, we have been assessed to have a very good chapter on, on human rights. Issues of leadership and that chapter six, if you look at the issues of leadership and the integrity issues, we've done very badly. Actually, given ch a chance, I would be saying that's a chapter, we either make a decision as Kenyans, we want it in our constitution or we don't want it. If we want it, it is time Parliament came up with uh, proposals on how to implement that chapter. Or if you don't want it, we get it out of our, 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 our constitution. The chapter, the issue on gender, gender, to that gender issue is a very sensitive issue. And that's an area we have attempted as parliament. We've never gotten it right. And I remember at one point, actually the last attempt, is a situation where the bar, we, are, we were debating this important matter in the house. And you could hardly count five uh, representative from uh, the women's side. It was only men debating this important topic. And, and that's why I was uh, smiling when uh, Gladys <laughs> was talking about it. Because he's saying we are captured not to support it. But on a serious note, even the, the 47 women rep in the house are not there. So, so I think that's another area we really need to ask ourselves as Kenyans. The way we are framed in the consumer maybe implementation is a challenge. So what do we need to, uh, to change? Look at our governance structure, the chapter on uh, legislature. Now we are talking about opposition leader being in the house. But when you look at that chapter, there's no provision. That's another area we might need to improve also. Look at the area of, uh, the, 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 area of the, 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 the executive. We have, you, you, you don't know, for the last two elections, we have been pushing the position of CAS, the chief administrative secretary. And we removed the position of assistant ministers. So, so is it time we, we sat down somebody and said, uh, maybe now we require this position and put it back again so that not have people going to court saying it's unconstitutional, it's constitutional. These are two issues. Look at the independent commissions. Very good commissions. But in terms of doing their work, have we given them the space to do their work? Look at what is happening in ESCC. Uh, you can see all over the papers. It's like they're not achieving what was expected of them. We have the Obutsman also. Uh, are Kenyans able to, to report their cases and be undressed? So I think, for me, I see an opportunity we could critically look at this document and see what we can uh, improve the bow. I remember at one point through the budget committee we did a, a quick one when Mwishma Mutawa Musimu was our chairman. And actually we, 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 we tasked a team to look at the concept. That was only about four years after the initial implementation. And at that point the team went around the country and one of the very interesting findings that early was that uh, uh, the, the position of the senator and the position of the women rep was being proposed even to be uh, done out with scrapped. So, mm -hmm. so, so I think really this might be the right opportunity for us to sit down as a king and say, <coughs> let's look at these documents and look at what was expected and what we have achieved so that we document that and based on that, we make the necessary amendments to the document, if need be. But you know, there's this people, people, some people are saying it's not time to amend this thing the, the American Constitution has been in place for over 200 years. It has only been amended, I think, 27 times. So, so that, that debate is on. But from where I said, I think it's time we allowed Kenyans to, a national 
conversation mm -hmm. on this document. Right. It will be bothered. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Jack Wambok, of course, uh, uh, now steamrolling this particular bill of a Political Amendment uh, Act 2011, uh, seeking to install into place the shaking uh, or install into place the office of the opposition. That is a topic that we need to also delve deeper on the other side of a break. And also we shall be looking at these silent issues that uh, we've just teased out with our panelists here uh, regarding the Katiba Day and the Katiba moment. is a constitutional moment in the country. We need to look deeply into that. But the menace of corruption, the president is at it right now and is going for the jugular and is not uh, blinking an eye and batting an eyelid on this as well. Uh, looking at the sugar sector in the Western Kenya, we shall be looking at that and what is happening, of course, the politics of the region as well. Uh, but also we saw the mystery uh, the, and uh, the disappearing of Rai as well, who right now we're given to understand he has been released by the abductors. That is the latest that, uh, news that was released yesterday. So we shall be looking at that as well and that particular sector, looking at the energy sector and the blackout as well. We, this is not the first time we've had a blackout. We had one in 2020, May 2020. We had one also in 2022 January, where we had nine executives from the Kenya Power and Lighting Company also arraigned. And uh, did we learn anything from that? Are we all the wiser as far as the black, uh, blackouts and outages are concerned? We take a short break right now, but before we do that, the weather is up next.